Greetings, prop makers of the world. We continue on down through the realm of the fantasy world. Ah, oh, infestation. You know, you get enough old stuff. You automatically get spiders and you get cobwebs. It's just, it happens. Anyways, as you might have guessed, this week is making a spider, which is a bit of a deviation from the rest of the stuff I've been working on lately. But I saw some fantastic stuff at the dollar store and I just had to take advantage of it. So this is a foam built spider using nothing but dollar store components. I think the whole thing all said and done is worth about $3 to put together. And it's a straightforward build using garden ties, foam balls, and a little bit of air dry foam. You can do clay here, I believe, but the weight will increase. The best part is, is this whole spider is absolutely featherweight. You can use it in so many places and it's quick to build many of them. So, you know, if one doesn't look horrifying, an entire squad of them will. Regardless, I'll leave you be. Enjoy Mr. Eight Legs of Destruction here. Enjoy the video. All right, we are onwards to our spider. So this is actually a really fun project and it was inspired when I was going through the dollar store and I saw these and I'm like, How's it doing? Of course I do gardening, but I was like, wow, it's a typical Canada, $1.50, or Dollarama is uh, hitting inflation. So these are pretty much just, I, I guess they're, what are they labeled actually as here? Foam wire ties. And when I saw them <laughs> as a prop maker, I'm like, hey, that's pool noodle foam. And I'm like, oh, that means I've got a wire inside. And immediately the idea started to run into my head. So. Thus, for that, you are getting a video this week about making a spider. Now, what I did here, is this is just to measure out. I'm going to go over exactly how I go about building these things. And I'm going to show you some examples of what I did otherwise. So, here we go. The first fold you're going to be making is at 1 inch, then 3.5 inches, then 4 inches, and then whatever's left. So, what you want to do is when you grab these noodles, you can use these ones. Or, I tested it with this roll as well. And I'm not a big fan of this roll. This one's already kind of pre-shrunk. If you can find these ones, it's okay. If you can find the other ones, uh, secondary. So what you do here is I just build one of these with the marks on it. You can do it with a piece of paper if you want. And then just bend it at the one inch. Flip it over. Bend it away at the three inch, like so. Turn it. Bend it at the four inch. And just like that you've got your spider leg. Now, what you want to do now is you want to take a knife and very, very, very gently score that joint there. And I mean lightly, because when you heat it, it's going to quickly cut through that. So what you want to do, it, you just want it to be ever so light so it just opens it up. Then you want to take the heat gun and you want to hit that a tiny, 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 tiny little bit, because you just wanted to, to pretty much seal that. And then on this length here, you want to heat it with the heat gun. I have it on setting two. I don't know what the heat that is, but it's not the hottest. And then what you do is you keep on rotating this through and you melt the center area. So you end up with it like opening up the joints. On this one, you melt the whole thing. And then once it's almost done, you'll see that this will almost go to a point naturally. And you do the same thing here as well. This is what I did with the last one. You can see. The, how big those scores open up once you heat them. You can see the wire, but it doesn't really matter. So here you go. You can see how if you heat the center, it shrinks it. And don't think you have to get this exact. After you turn off the heat gun, this will shrink a tiny bit more. So it, play with it. You'll you'll get into a good feel of how this works. And this has got to be the world's easiest insect leg. I'm upset because I can't find these at my local store anymore and I didn't buy enough. The other thing that I'm upset at is there's 15 in this bag couldn't have added one more so I can make two spiders out of a single bag. So, once you've got this, of course, we're making a spider, so we need eight of these. You create eight, and then go spray paint them with whatever color you want. I went with a semi-metallic black, as you can see. Yeah, this is off to the side, exactly the color I went with. You can't use acrylics on this stuff, it really does not take well, so you have to spray paint them. The good news is the paint doesn't react with this foam, so you can actually get good legs and make it look really good. So once we've got that, you're gonna make a whole bunch of them. And this is what it looks like when they're all done and painted. You see it's already mounted up. I'm gonna go over that in a second. 
but you can see just how cool this looks. And this is a flat iron black that I used. I think it turned out, I couldn't ask for better. It's got that really cool like chitinous reflectivity, looks really good. You can actually see where I got a little bit carried away on one of these where I melted it a little bit too much in here, but it doesn't matter. It looks good and it's light. So once you have your eight legs done, this one, this part is a little bit harder because this foam likes to melt. So it just gotta be gentle. So what I did is I cut a little arch out of this. And what is gonna happen is, is you're pretty much just gonna use it to glue the legs to because the wire inside is hiding inside the foam and the moment the hot glue hits it, it melts it, but it's really strong and you need strong on these legs because there's actually a bit of, there's a bit of leverage there and you don't want it snapping out. So when you glue these, you just gotta be patient, put a little bit on, wait for it to dry, put a little bit on. And there's a certain point where you can put a lot on and you can see, God, that doesn't that look beautiful? That, that's quality work right there. And then you can see it completely fills it in, holds it all in and melts it. The other one, the other side is very much the same, but you see I got a little bit better on this one where I realized how it was actually going to melt it, really strong. So this isn't gonna come apart when you use it up on the wall. And this is where I accidentally touched it on the hot glue gun. So I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do to fix that. So now when you build these, it, it's a bit of a fun part that you want to make sure that these legs are somewhat symmetrical. So when we move forward, that they're good to go. So once you've got these legs completely finished and all ready to go, you can dry brush these a little bit. I might at the end or put some brown on. We'll see, I haven't decided yet. We're gonna move on to the body. Now, the body, oh, I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna grab this because there's a little bit of a story here on how sometimes the best, the best outcomes come from the the most interesting mistakes. So here is the or the uh, half symmetric or half sphere. And you wanna find the ones that have a smooth surface on them like this. These are at the dollar store, same place I got those. So what is it, Dollarama? These, they come in bags of two, very easy. So what I did is I initially I drew some pen on here because when you heat this, sometimes the pen reacts differently depending on the material on. And over here, I did a whole bunch of slices with a knife to see if it would open it up. Neither worked, but do you notice something there? As I heated it, all of the grain for the texture underneath started to become more pronounced. And I, I squealed, because I'm like, <laughs> how manly is that? I squealed. I, I, <laughs> I smile. <laughs> I smiled because I couldn't, I couldn't build a texture like this that easy. So. I tested it on the final abdomen and holy crap did it turn out just stunning I couldn't ask to make something as good as this for a texture on a spider's abdomen is it the abdomen or thorax one of the two all I did was I sliced a slight bit off here so when it sits down onto a surface it doesn't go flat it gives it a bit of dimension up off the base to make it look like it's more rounded rather than the spider stuck in the wall and then the second one, I do the exact same thing. I just rounded the bottom, look over this in a second. I just rounded the bottom, and then what I did is I put, I cut this out at the back, so when these two connect with each other, you have a really good, or you have a really good connection there. We're gonna be doing a bit more on this, but I'll explain how I got the legs in place. This thorax, or whatever the heck it is, I'm gonna stop talking now, is done. We don't need to, we're gonna have to paint that, I think I'm gonna paint it with acrylic paints because I've got a bad feeling the spray paint's gonna melt it. I may make this one into my sacrificial test and see what the paint does to it because every different styrofoam reacts different to the spray paint. It might look cool, it might look horrible. I will let you know when I get back. So here, all I did is I took the legs now and I flipped this over. And once you've got these legs built, you're going to have it where you're gonna have two sides of where they go. Oh, look at that glue on there. I'm gonna see if I can get that off because it's just gonna cause nothing but problems. So you're gonna have two sides. You can see these have a little bit of symmetry to them. And the reason was is I wanted to make sure that they go in the right place. So now I've got a very, very, very poor mark on one of these that says R. I did it with a black pen on black. So yeah, you know how well that ended up. But what I did, there we go. That looks good. So all I did is I put this down on top and I drew around it so I could cut this in. Just give me one second before I go too far. 
yeah, it's definitely this side. So, and what I did is I put it in, then I took a pen and, sorry, I took a pen and I marked up here. You can actually, oh, they're almost all gone. And then I just used a Dremel to make a channel for that to sit into. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna glue that into place there, so the spider. And just like that, the spider got its legs. So you can see, it works really good and it's gonna be super strong. And I did the exact same thing on the other side and it kind of channels into exactly where it needs to be. And just like that, you'll have the connection point for your spider legs all done and your main part of your, your the front part is just about done. I really should have looked up the names. I, I did a whole paper craft tutorial on tran, tran, of a tarantula and I put the actual names on it. Do you think I remembered? Mine of those about a year ago. So the uh, once you got this, this is where you can have some fun. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing here. Now, I went and got some of my air dry foam. I'm trying to keep this thing light so I can hang it off the wall easily. And I did a very light sculpt on these because I'm going to go after it dries and I'm going to use a knife because this stuff is really easy to work with. Um, just Crayola air dry foam. And these are going to be used to mount up here. Uh, probably about this angle. They are over the top big. Once again, emphasize stuff that you want to look scary without it making it look stupid. And we're going to be putting some eyes on here as well. Uh, I got a bit more to do on here, so I'll be back for that. But I just want to show you kind of where things are going on, what our first step is. And then once we're here, you'll see that once the thorax is on, the spider really comes, starts coming together quickly. It's going to look freaking fantastic. Anyways, I'll be back to talk about this part once I've got the parts done for it and we will discuss further. I'll be back. So we return and where are we now? All I've done is on this front body here, I, I pretty much used this piece of sandpaper and sanded it down and then I spray painted it and you can see the texture there. The, and then I finished it up with some acrylic black paint I'm probably going to go back and spray paint this one last time now that I've got my mandibles on or what are the fangs on, whatever they are. And the same thing on the back here. I hit it with the spray paint once to bring up the texture, but if I kept on hitting it, it would just melt it. So what I did is I'm kind of doing a spray paint, acrylic spray paint type trick. So it protects the, the actual foam when you're working on it. Now on the underside here, all I did to hold this together is I put two toothpicks through here to get it in position and then I use some hot glue and of course the hot glue is going to melt your foam a little bit so I protected it with some wood glue before I actually glued it so it's actually a really really strong connection now and that's one of the main reasons why I I like to use hot glue and something like this the connection is really strong and to finish up all I did is I glued these guys in place and it works out pretty well to keep it all situated and nice and you see the legs have still have some posability and the best part is is this whole thing right now weighs maybe 50 grams so you can use it for a lot of different cool effects but it looks like it weighs a lot more the only thing i'm going to do next is i'm going to put in a little bit of air dry foam here to give these legs uh kind of like a, a, a covering because i don't like just how it sits in there you can do it however you want same with the these mandibles technically these are wrong because these are out I did that because when you display this on a wall if you have them proper you won't see them you have to give them a little bit of a spin this almost gives it looking like an, almost like an ant look to it and the other thing is it gives me gives me more space to put eyes in here which I needed especially for the size and what I'm using for the eyes which are going to be Da, 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 my typical dollar store gems and I need I was scaling them out to see how they would look and they're gonna look pretty darn cool I may even keep those as uh, diamonds Whoops. hello mr. spider uh, keeping those as diamonds so any light catches them flickers and catches your eye anyways I'm gonna go build these I'll come back and I'll show you exactly how I did that all right I'm back and it was really simple I just made like a bit of a, a long worm stuck it onto the bottom here brought it over the top and then just stuck it back down again and just like that it's done 
it's going to float a bit while it dries and when it's all done I'm just going to put a bead of glue across the top here and here to hold it in place but that's just got to air dry now but you can see that it really does flesh out this body makes it a bit wider and makes it look a bit more spiderish once this is dry I'm going to put a coat of black spray paint on the whole thing again because I want it to be this chitinous metallic that I did on the main on the legs but anyways I'll be back once this dries it's a bit of a time consuming thing and I need to wait and it doesn't uh, I'll be back alrighty this is our final step before we get to the final paint job and I just wanted to stop show you how everything turns out you can see how the air dry clay just looks fantastic and all of the seams were done and once I was all finished I just did another shot of spray paint uh, the iron color because I really like how it looks here. I want that shiny chitinous look. Now I'm going to go through with a bit of burnt umber. <laughs> like that is a surprise, eh? Look, someone's using burnt umber. Yes, I use it all the time. I love the color. Don't judge me. I'm going to do a bit here. I may do some red on these joints just to give the whole thing some color because I'm thinking about doing these fangs as red as well. But as it's coming along, and I'm also going to go put the eyes on, I mix between doing them out of these gems, or I've got some little glow-in-the-dark stickers, which I think would look fantastic as well. I haven't decided yet. You'll see when I come back what I have decided on this. Anyways, I'm going to go and uh, do some aging on here and do some painting on here so it looks all pretty-like. But I will be back, and I'll go over the final spider. And Yes, see you in a bit. And it's the last time hearing my sweet, melodious voice on this video. We're going to get rid of Play well. Anyways, so we are all done with our spider here. And you can see that all I have done is I've taken a bit of copper, dry brushed it onto the joints, and did a bit of copper around here. And this turned out fantastically. When you think about the components that go into this and the price that it actually costs, this is a pretty wicked prop. And I was testing another one last night just to see how quick you can actually build them and i got to this point here in about 45 minutes and heck this one i forgot to paint the legs before i put on the body so i made it into a green spider see lots of options you can do but it just goes to show just how quickly you can make these things once you get going now the only other thing i didn't go over before is i was talking about the eyes and i tried stickers and they just didn't work in the end I took my wife's suggestion, who had a while ago, which I had dismissed unfairly, said that she didn't want to use bees, and I'm like, I don't know if the bees will look, because I was thinking about the hole. All they did is they turned them horizontally, and then using a soldering iron, I very gently melted a hole for the spot that it goes, a little bit less than what was needed, and then I just forced the bead in to make the eye. It looks fantastic. They actually look reflective. And these beads, in, these beads in particular work really well. It was from an old bracelet that she had fall apart. And, you know, hoarder Mr. McSawwin here has to hold on to everything, put it in a drawer somewhere and go, hey, at some point later, those may be spider eyes. No, that's just the way it is. But anyways, I hope that you've taken some if you're not going to build the spider if you've taken some awesome tips and some hints from this video and it was been a fun one to build but anyways thank you so much for tuning in and uh building mr mcspider here and if you end up scaring anybody like i scared both my wife and my children yesterday with it then you're doing something right so once again, uh, if you really enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button. If you just liked what you saw, but you don't know if you can put up with me weekly, hit just the like button, which I think is over there. But uh, regardless, I'll be back next week. Well, whatever, if you watch this video out of sequence, technically it's not next week. It's whenever you happen to see the next video, which may not be next week. But if I say next week in every single video, that means the next video will automatically be the next one that you see. Ah, <laughs> I've got this all figured out. Have a good one all.